Hi, I'm Bob Hoagland, Senior Faculty Member for the William Glasser Institute and President of Bob Hoagland Incorporated. Choice theory, which was developed by William Glasser, MD, has four main components. The basic needs, the quality world, the perceptual system, and total behavior. This module will give you an overview of the basic psychological need. Dr. Glasser teaches that in addition to our survival need, we all have four psychological needs. The need for love and belonging, for power, for freedom, and the need for fun. The need for love and belonging. Everyone has a need to love and be loved. We want to be connected with people, with organizations. So we have our family, our friends, and other groups and organizations that we belong to. The need for power still has a negative connotation to some, although that's diminishing. People like accomplishment, achievement, recognition, impact. We like people to listen to us, and we definitely want to be competent in whatever we do. The need for freedom gets little argument. We all want to be able to live our lives the way we want to live them, to believe what we want to believe, to go where we want to go, to make choices, and to be able to express ourselves. The last need to talk about is the need for fun. Few would argue that laughter and play produce fun. Additionally, Dr. Glasser teaches that fun is the physiological payoff of learning. If you think about a time when you've worked hard and you really got a concept, or you learned a new skill, and you think about how you felt, you look back and say, that was really fun. So obviously with an educational component, we really want to emphasize to the student that learning is fun. Now when we talk about the basic needs, obviously we have survival, but then when we start talking about the psychological needs of love and belonging. If you ask me as a teacher, did you belong at Tempe High School? I would say yes. And then you would say, well, did you have any power or recognition at Tempe High School? I would have said yes. And then we talk about freedom. Now I did have some of that because nobody wanted to come near my class. So at least I had some freedom. But even in terms of walking around the campus, if you don't know a lot of people, how free do you feel? And then lastly, if those three are like that, how much fun do you think I'm having on campus? I know a couple people in special ed. I knew a couple of other teachers. And so even in my second year, I would say, yes, I was satisfying these. But in year four, I started coaching. Well, now I don't just know special ed kids. I know kids that are running track. I know kids that are running cross country. And I was coaching both boys and girls. So now I'm expanding the number of people I know. I've been at the campus a little bit longer. What's happening here? What's happening here? And it just continues. All of them are more satisfied. And then I switched. I switched from the runners to the baseball players, which is really what I was. I played baseball through college, semi-pro, the whole bit. I know baseball. So now I know girls softball kids, and I know boys baseball kids. Well, now what percentage of those 1,800 students, 1,900 students do I know? And at least if I walk down the hallway, what's the likelihood I'm not going to see some people I know? And after being there for six years or eight years and people know who I am, what do you think happens in terms of just my ability to wander campus? By about year seven or eight, I could really say, yeah, this is a great place to be. The only reason I left my classroom was I could have impact in one school or I could have impact all over. And it's worked out that way. These ideas work regardless of the school that you're in or the age level that you're working with. For more information, videos, podcasts, articles, training opportunities, monthly thoughts, tips, and quotes, please visit my website, www.bobhoagland.com. Thanks for taking the time to listen.